orchestra, we have Dick Van Dyke. <laughs> and Vicky's and my special guest this evening is Steve Lawrence. major city, there is that handful of courageous men who spend their lives fighting crime. This is the story of one of those men. His name, Danny Draft, Private Eye. Sunday, yeah. Little green things. Bunch of legs on. They're all over the ceiling. That's not what I'm talking about. Someone is trying to kill me. Can I need your help? My help? What? Why would I want to help him kill you? I don't even know you. Well, I know you. You're a famous private eye. I saw your name in the yellow pages, and I want to hire you to protect me. You do? Know, well, I don't work cheap. Take care of the first year, but the first year? I have a cold-blooded killer after me. I'll be lucky if I last out the week. Oh, well, then maybe you better pay in advance. There are a lot of other things worth more than money. When was the last time you saw a body like this? When I went from bottles to cans. <laughs> you've forgotten what it's like to be with a woman. No, not yet, but I'm working on it. <laughs> I guess you can't appear. I don't want to drink. I consider the habit disgusting, vile, and repulsive. Yeah. Well, don't beat around the bush. You want one or not, lady? I'm desperate. Last night, last 
night, the killer tried to climb through my bedroom window. <gasps> First clue, he's blind. <laughs> he left this. It was on the ground underneath my window. <laughs>
make myself a name Maybe I won't know another love that's quite the same But we better just forget it I know someday I'll regret it I don't want you to be sorry that I came Cause every time I sing a love song I'll be singing it to you Every time I sing a love song I know all the words are true Though a thousand ears will hear me It's a smoky, crowded place Though a thousand eyes will see me I will always see your face Now someday I will say goodbye It's a song I've sung before So let me sing it now Before I hurt you anymore And when love comes back to find you I hope that he'll remind you Of the singer you once sang your love song for Cause every time I sing a love song I'll be singing it to you Every time I sing a love song I know all the words are true Though a thousand ears will hear me In some smoky, crowded place Though a thousand eyes will see me I will always see your face Cause every time I sing a love song That was just dynamite. Thank you very much, Dad. You know something? Yeah. I would give anything to be able to sing the way you do. Well, that's really no big deal. Even you could do it. Oh, no way. Are you kidding? I have never been able to sing in my life. It's one of my great frustrations. Come on, what are you talking about? I've heard you sing, didn't you? Well, then you know I'm not lying. I can't sing for sour apples. <laughs> Why don't you stop putting yourself down? Give it a shot. I'll help you if you want. You're trying to tell me that I can learn to sing right now? Sure. All you got to do is uh, follow what I do. Really? Who do you think taught Edie? <laughs> <laughs> I think you're in a lot of trouble. I think the first, the first, thing, the first thing you got to do is you got to take a deep breath. It all starts with the diaphragm, right here. <laughs> oh, but that hurts. Yeah, but that's just the start of it. See, then yeah. you get it up from the diaphragm, in well behind the mask, and you go like this. Mm. Ah, ah. <laughs> a little strange, but I think we can do better. Okay, try okay. it again. Suck in here. Okay. Ah. <laughs> Nothing wrong up here. Yeah, I think it's no bit of a problem, but you're not beyond help. I think I can no, help. No, ain't gonna work, Steve. I just know it. Nobody's gonna be able to help me. See, I, I, I really couldn't sing. I never could sing. What I couldn't do was sing. I have trouble with that note. It goes all around my throat. It's a terrifying thing. See, I really couldn't hear which note was lower or was higher, which is why I disappear when someone says, let's start a, a little quiet. Hey, when I begin to squeak, there's a cross between a shriek and a quiver or a moan. Yeah. It's a little like a crow or a record player. Bro. What it doesn't have is tone. Yeah, I don't know what you're thinking. What a crazy ding a But I really couldn't sing. What I couldn't really do. Sing. Well, I couldn't do is sing. That's right. Well, I, I tell you, I really find that hard to believe, Dick. I mean, you've all people, you've got so much rhythm and things like that. Right. I voice. Rhythm. I mean, well, I'll tell you what. Why don't you try this? <laughs> no, not this. Try this. <laughs> Three blind mice. I got it. Three blind mice. Not quite. Not good. quite. Not quite. I you, here's, here's one that every kid can do. What? So surely you should be able to do it. Right, jingle it. bells, jingle bells. Jingle bells, jingle bells. <laughs> you put me on, aren't you? No, I'm not. You know what really blows my mind? I get depressed. But what I lack in pitch, I sure make up in <laughs> oh, And all my friends say I'm perfect. In the shower. You're all wet, Ben. <laughs> Still, I'm terrific when I dance. You can see it at, at a glance. glance. I'm a birdie on the pink. But when I begin to chirp, they say, who's that little chirp going pong instead of bing? And when Christmas comes, ah, Christmas. and all my friends go caroling. Merry Christmas. <laughs> it is so disheartening. It's so disquieting. Ding. It is so discouraging. Ding. Please stop answering. You don't have to rub it in. <laughs> but I really couldn't sing. I could never really sing. What I couldn't do is sing. Try this. Oh, 
more and more stars of hit television shows are holding out for more money or better working conditions or better parts. Some of them actually wind up leaving the show. Let's take a look at some of this season's TV holdouts. Get this, Norman. Either you meet these demands or I am walking off the show. Well, let me take a look at this. 250000 an episode. A Rolls Royce. You want a dressing room with a waterbed in it. You want 12 and a half percent of the profits. Hey, you kidding? I'm tired of being exploited, Norman. Take it or leave it. Yeah? Well, I guess we're just going to have to replace you. How do you like that? <laughs> Are you kidding? No way. You can't possibly replace me. My picture is on all the T-shirts, on all the posters, and on all the lunch boxes. You try to replace me, the public will drop this show like a lead balloon, pal. Yeah? Well, I kind of thought you were going to quit the show, so uh, we're holding auditions for your part today. Uh, he's right out there in the waiting room. You're kidding me. <laughs> this I got to see. Hi. Hi. <laughs> yeah, welcome back, Al. Thank nice you very much. You want to get me a refill on that? Yes, yeah. sir, right away. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> want to have these back by 3 o'clock? <laughs> I can't get over how glad I am that we walked off our show. Me too. If they're not willing to pay a person what he or she is worth, then I just say, tough noogies. <laughs> you see that girl that took your place? Yes. I mean, she's the pits. Oh, honey, don't be cruel. Really, honey? I mean, bulging hips, skinny <laughs> legs, and her hair is just awful. <laughs> and when she runs, boy, I gotta tell you, honey, nobody bounces the way you bounce. <laughs> Just say, let them sleep in it. Yeah. I mean, what do they want from me anyway? I was on the show for a whole season. <laughs> How about my show, huh? I mean, after I left, they had to take it off the air. All those poor little people thrown out of work because the producer just wouldn't listen to reason. You know, network people really don't understand quality. Mm. Sure glad to get away from those jerks, I'll tell you that. That's right. Besides, there are other things besides show business. You said it, baby. <laughs> well... I think we better get going, huh? I think so too, sweetheart. I don't want to be late. Come <laughs> well, honey, I'll drop you off at the diner, okay? Okay, maybe you can have a hot dog with me. Okay. okay. All right, gang, let's rehearse this thing. As we open, Father's seated in his easy chair, Mom is vacuuming, and Susie enters. Okay, go. I'm walking off the show. <laughs> what? You heard me. Either I get my $2,000 a week raise or I am walking oh. off the show. Oh, Madeline, please, honey, will you be reasonable? I am being reasonable. I'm the only one on the show with her own comic book. <laughs> Not me, the show is sunk. All right. Okay. You got it. You got what you want. Now, can we just go ahead now with the rehearsal? Huh? Go. Hi, Bob. Hi, Dan. <laughs> I'm walking off the show. <laughs> What? That's right. She gets a raise, I get a raise. I mean, look at this thing here. It says, here's father, doesn't it? I'm the father, aren't I? Huh? Oh, it's yeah, right yeah. there. Makes sense, doesn't it? All right, Bill. You're right. You're right. You get the raise. All right. Okay? All right. All right, please. Would you go? All right. No, you're pushing me. Really? Hi, Susie. <laughs> uh, Mildred, it's your line. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. All right. Before we go any further, you've got your raise, okay? Can you go, Mildred? No. You see, I want to be paid one dollar more than anyone else on this show. Oh. Oh. Mildred, you please be reasonable? After all, the show is called Here's Father. Right, right, and right, Madeline right. here is a teenage idol, honey. But I'm the only one here with any previous acting experience. Mm. <laughs> all right, honey, you've got your dollar. Thank Can we you. go now? Mm -hmm. All right, go, please. Whoa. <laughs> 
she is now the highest paid person on the show. I think the least you can do is get in the dressing room with my own soda fountain. <laughs> okay, three can play this. Whatever happened to the door-to-door -door limo? I'm sure no one will mind if I have a sauna in my dressing room trailer. Certainly not, as long as I get my free trip to Hawaii. Are you kidding me? Okay, class, that's it for today. Now, tomorrow we're going to teach you how to storm off a set, throw a tantrum, and lock yourself in your dressing room. Yeah. <laughs> Stay tuned for the second half of the Carol Burnett Show. And now, back for the second half of the Carol Burnett Show. from Fran Whitey? No, nope. not for weeks. Nobody's heard from her. Could you hold me? Could you? Could you kiss me? Could you? Could you gonna say why should you? But could you? <laughs> It'll do me good, ya, should ya, could ya? a job as a singer. I'm really quite good, you know. Hey, baby, are you crazy? Can't you see I'm rehearsing a number here? Yes. Can't you see? I... Oh, baby. Oh, why me? <laughs> oh. Baby, you're finally going to get your kiss. <laughs> oh, what are you smiling on that funny face? Oh, I was just thinking of, of something Father Mellon once sang to me. <laughs> he sang... Don't ever let Whitey Morton kiss you, because if you do, terrible things could happen. <laughs> <laughs> Did the earth move for you, baby? Oh, yeah. Stand still for your baby. Ryan, it worked. It worked. How did you do that? Like that. Don't show me. You know something, pal? I had you figured wrong. Oh. Well, I'm so glad at last the two of you are friends. Well, well the city's in ruins. What are we going to do? Well, we'll just rebuild it, darling. But, but how? 
with a rousing song. <laughs> San Francisco is a two-faced woman who has had a shaky night on the town. San Francisco is like Grand San Francisco, and you can't keep either one of them down. We must be filled each mansion, each by the ten. Come on, you two-faced women, and you two is the Thank you. 